Hey guys, thanks for stopping by. So today I'm going to be showing you the frizzle sizzle. It's a succulent that has the little curlies on it that grow out of a bulb. Um, it's one of our most popular sellers in our plant shop and I've never even talked about it before. So let's go ahead and do it. All right, so here they are. You can see that they grow from a bulb um, and then they grow these cute little curly keys on them. They're all a little different. Um, this one you can see has got some new little shoots coming out and they're curling up. Now I keep these guys right right next to the south window over here. Um, I've even kept them outside but we've had such terrible pollution here um, and just really scorching temperatures so I've brought them inside and I've got them right next to the south window. Honestly, they'd probably like even more light than this, but you do what you gotta do. So they're doing good in here. Yeah, they'd love to be like, have direct light all the time. They need a lot of light. Um, these guys, whoops, they like to be watered more than your average succulent, I would say. Like I water these guys once a week and um, they will go dormant in the summer. And a lot of times when we ship them out, um, you'll see in our description on the, the shop that a lot of times, or sometimes when we ship them, they do go dormant in the box. And what happens is that these, these little curly cues, they start to brown. Um, see how this one right on the end there is starting to brown a little bit? So they'll do that on the whole stem. And, you know, they'll kind of look like they're dying, but they're not. They're just going dormant because, like I said, they need a ton of light. Um, as long as the bulb is firm and not squishy or anything, they're fine. Just go dormant when they don't get enough light. So um, that could be really any time of year. If you have them in your house, it depends how much light they're getting through your window or if you're using grow lights or something, then you can kind of control that a little bit more. But naturally they do go dormant in the summer and then they'll come back in the winter. So don't worry if you have one and you think it's dead, it's not. Um, it'll come back, just let it sit. Um, you don't need to water it hardly at all while it's dormant. And, and by hardly at all, it's hard to say because everyone's environments are different, but for me, Gosh, I'd probably water it like when the so when the soil's just totally, pretty much totally dried out. And I'm really not scientific too much about it. I, unless you call my finger scientific, and you know, I just use that to kind of feel. You can feel if there's moisture in there or not. You can also tell by how heavy the pot is. And yeah. So they're really cute. They're really cute. They look like little, I don't know, little uh, piggy tails or little curly cues. They're super cute. And they will flower. So I don't have any flowering right now, but when they do flower, that usually causes these to start dying off as well. So if you don't want these to die off at that time, then you're gonna wanna cut the flower off. But if you want the flower, then go for it. And then it'll just go dormant 
and then you can start the whole process over again, which is fun. Um, what else was I going to tell you about these guys? I don't, I don't really fertilize them. I do use the fish, the water from the fish pond to water them, and they don't really get pests or anything like that. I haven't had any issues outside or in the sunroom. I haven't had to take any steps. Of course, we do have the ladybugs in the sunroom, so they could be they could be helping with that and me be me unaware of it, but I'm yeah, I haven't had any issues. What else? Oh, I know. Sometimes the the stems, like if they start growing out and they don't have the curls on them, then that means they're not getting enough light. You need to give them a lot, lot of light. That's about it on that. If you guys have any questions or anything, um, be sure to put them in the comments or if you have anything else you'd like to share um, about the frizzle sizzle, then put those in the comments as well. One other thing I should mention is that humidity really hasn't been an issue for them. Um, in the sunroom today, the humidity is 80 and they're fine. And when I had them outside, which we live in Utah, so it's very dry, um, the humidity is like lower than 20 and they did fine there as well. So speaking of humidity, I wanted to show you guys something that I just got. Um, you guys, I don't know if you've watched any of my other videos. We we got an Elec Home humidifier. I've actually got three now, but I had one in my room. Um, we had one in my room, but I moved it out to the sunroom for the days when it wasn't staying humid enough. And we really missed having one in our bedroom. So we got this this littler one and I love it. Like, I think I might like this one even better than the big ones. You do have to fill it more often. Like I pretty much have to fill it every 12 hours. I've got it on the medium setting and yeah, it runs out about every 12 hours, but we keep it running constantly. Um, when I didn't have it in here, it really was affecting like my I'd wake up and my throat would be stuck together and um, this plant up here shortly after I moved the humidifier out it got um, scale all over it. I don't know if that's just a quinky dink but I don't think it was because this plant I had for quite a long time and it was doing so well. It was so long and beautiful but I cut it off so I could take care of the scale easier and since we've had the humidifier back in here it's been doing great and all my other plants really appreciate it too i'll just show you while we're in here this is my lovely pothos enjoy now someone told me this might be another plant and i'm not sure and i will insert the name because i forgot but um Looking into it, I think it might be that other plant, but it was sold to me as a Pothos Enjoy. But you can see the leaves on it are shaped a little bit different than one would think a Pothos Enjoy would be shaped. And usually the Pothos Enjoy, um, they like have little dots on them and the leaves are much, much smaller. So I don't know, tell me what you think about that. While we're in here, I might as well just show you the rest of my plants. Um, there's my Black Pagoda. It's doing good. That Publicalyx that is going vining everywhere and always grabs me by the hair when I walk by. Kind of freaks me out a little, but that one's doing great. Still waiting for her to flower. She has not flowered and I'm really surprised because Usually when they get all the viney things on them, then they start flowering, but I don't know. We'll see. Gotta be patient, I suppose. Um, over here, this is my pothos, my oldest plant. Uh, it's interesting because, see, I've got the vines all wrapped up into the plant, but 
it started out just green like this. And as it's grown out, it's gotten much more variegated. I wonder, I'm not sure what causes that to happen. Does anyone have any theories on that? It doesn't get a lot, a ton of light right here or anything like that. So I don't know, but it's fun. It's fun. I really like this one. I just, oh, look at this leaf. It's a half C. Another half C. Another half C. There's one with half white on it. I don't know. Plants are fun. Um, I took some cuttings of it because I'm going to add some to my bathroom plant. But I've just got them propagating in these. They're super easy to propagate, as I'm sure you probably know already. But they're easy to propagate in water. That's how I would recommend doing it for these. But really pretty. Really robust. Love this plant. Over here, this is the, the Stromanthi Trio Star. That one's doing okay. I had it... I had it somewhere else and it didn't like it there, so I moved it back in here and it's perking back up, but the leaves are really fantastic. It's got some new, got one dying here. There's a new one coming in and the backs of the leaves are beautiful. This one likes to dry out before I water it pretty much. Um, up here is the Hoya Bella. That plant's crazy. I've taken so many cuttings off of this thing and it just, the more cuttings I take, the faster it grows. And it's so pretty. Um, it buds all the time, but the, the buds always dry up. I'm not sure why, but it's okay because it's just so pretty and dangly, like a little pendant necklace or something and then let's see over here we've got the grazelay this is a super slow growing plant but look how cute the leaves are takes a really long time for the leaves to come out and i've taken quite a few cuttings from this one as well and i've rooted those directly in dirt and that's my sort of sad looking little uh maranta yeah it's pretty sad looking i had it i told you guys it was doing good in my bathroom and i accidentally lied it wasn't it it hated it and crusted up and but it's it'll come back it's okay interesting because that one almost looks like a lemon lime <laughs> You see that? See how the veins are green? And the veins on this one are usually red, so I don't know. We'll see what happens with that one, but it's in a good spot now. Um, this is the, what's your name? I'll insert it. This one's really easy for a Calathea, especially. I don't give them any special water or anything like that. They just get regular water, hard water out of our tap, and this one does great. It always looks really healthy. Musaica, Calathea Musaica. I love the pattern on the leaves, super cool. And then, whoops. And then up here, this is my uh, Schlumbergera. This one gets the white flowers with the little pink centers and it came from my mom, so. I love it. Hey guys, well thanks for watching. I hope you have a great day. Remember to leave your comments about, well, anything in this video. And I can't wait to hear from you. I hope you have a great day. And remember to plant on.